हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द अद्वैत डीकोडिंग रियलिटी पॉडकास्ट द पर्पस ऑफ दिस पॉडकास्ट इज टू अनकवर द नेचर ऑफ रियलिटी टू अंडरस्टैंड डिफरेंट डायमेंशंस डिफरेंट लेयर्स ऑफ दिस कॉम्प्लेक्स मल्टीफैसेटेड रियलिटी एंड टू डिस्कवर हु वी ट्रूली आर वी विल एक्सप्लोर वेरियस कॉन्सेप्ट्स एंड वेरियस एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ दिस एग्जिस्टेंस in this podcast and we will talk to various people with an open mind and a curious heart to understand their perspectives and their experiences with reality all this to decode reality hello everyone welcome to the advaita decoding reality podcast and today we have with us karen lunev she started her podcast in 2006 and her podcast was in top 10 in self help category on itunes for over 13 years and has accumulated over 20 million downloads in that time through her podcast coaching and online programs she has been an executive coach to c suite and ambitious high performers for extreme acceleration of achievement of business career and life goals she has extensively worked with a variety of businesses from solopreneurs to seasoned entrepreneurs and top international sales professionals to hollywood creatives and even a staff member of the executive office of the president of the united states karen has been featured in huffington post she has appeared in global bc and the financial post she has also written and published a book attraction in action your how to guide to relationships money work uh, and health as well as several other journals so we will learn more about her throughout this podcast with that welcome karen to advaita decoding reality podcast thanks so much sujan this is so wonderful to be here with you yeah same here let's start with what got you here so far so how did you get to do what you do right now That's good. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, way back in the '90s, late '90s, before mm. Google, before Yahoo, before all that stuff, is, <laughs> before, um, I um, I started learning. Um, I just knew that there was something that made everything work. I knew there was a mechanism, and so. Um mm-hmm. I had been, you know, my husband and I were out and we were shopping and I found this book. It was called mm-hmm. um Maximum Achievement. Sorry, I've got all my books okay. on the sides here. <laughs> and okay. it was by Brian Tracy <laughs> and I was interested in business and so but I was also interested in the metaphysical side of things. And um I was really surprised that in the book it, he started talking about universal laws. and i was just like i had never heard of universal laws before that and um i was just and i thought and that combined with business is like what that's why what is that all about so i just gobbled that book up but in it was um the those particular laws and i wrote them down on little you know little cards and one of them was the law of attraction and i started using that i started kind of practicing with it and um amazing things started to happen just like these synchronicities and things that i i you know that my husband and i wanted they just showed up really easily mm-hmm. and um i started teaching it i was in the employment industry and and helping people to find work and so i started uh teaching them the concept and a lot of people some of the people were having great um great responses not everybody and i think it was just there's reasons for that now that i under, i understand now that i didn't understand then uh and then um as it went on i just uh i started my podcast i um you know i was working in a job and um and i started the podcast and cuz i just thought people need to know about this uh and the secret the movie the secret had just come out and so the timing was all was all perfect so it had just come out and then i finally figured out how to get a podcast up cuz it was not easy back then that was in 2006 yeah. uh and um and so it just went from there and so uh, i started getting clients and left my job about a year later and uh and from there it just it just it, it was it just it just blew up right so uh, the, i started coaching business people that's who i who i attracted and um and uh 
really the base of it was law of attraction. I moved into mindset and then, um, and then, you know, what I'm doing now, which is, which is a little bit different. So, but uh, yeah, that's, that's really how it all happened. It was just, I just had this desire to really show or, or just share this with, with, with people. And, um, and it was, it was a lot of fun because I, I would get these emails back saying, Oh, Karen, thank you so much. You know, from people all over the world, which was so yeah. fun. And, um, cause I'm, you know, I was living in a small place in Canada and, uh, you know, my podcast, I started doing in my closet cause that was the best acoustics I could get. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and, uh, you know, people were just having really great results. You know, they were, you know, finding relationships, uh, you know, houses, cars, whatever it is, you know, great jobs. And so, um, so that's yeah. really. Before that, you didn't have any sort of, uh, you know, like before you found this material, were you mm-hmm. a spiritual person or were you into these kinds of teachings? What were you doing before this? I was cut. I was into, I knew there was alternative stuff. So, but no, in terms of spiritual teachings, not particularly, Mm. I was kind of more into healing practices. Actually, I uh, was, I found people who were working with magnets and such. And, and, uh, and uh, so, which is funny because of course it's attraction too. Right. But um, all, it's all been about magnetic stuff. And so (laughs) it, um, (laughs) Yeah. So no, I wasn't particularly a spiritual person. I was not a religious person and, uh, and yeah, but it, it, it grew out from there. I think probably not long after I, my, one of the first books I read was conversations with God by Neil Donald, Neil Donald yeah. Walsh. And, mm-hmm. uh, that just, you know, blew mm-hmm. my mind. So, so let's start with the basic framework of law of attraction, right? Almost all the people who are listening to this will know this, but let's mm-hmm. start there. So the premises, our thoughts, our feelings, they have a certain, you know, certain energy to them and they create a certain impact uh, for ourselves and this world. Let's start there. The Sure. The, um, yeah, it was really like attracts like, like energy attracts like energy. And so, um, mm-hmm. and you know, I was listening to um, Abraham Hicks, probably a lot of people would know mm-hmm. um, Abraham Hicks. And so from there, uh, you know, I'd listened to her and, and um, to me then as I moved along with it again, it was, it was just really about um, developing that focus and, you know, it was her thoughts or feelings. And I, I coined a word a long time ago called, you know, it was feelings. So it's when you have really highly charged feelings, thoughts and feelings together, that's when things would show up, whether it was wanted or unwanted, like good stuff or bad stuff. Like if you had really negative feelings, then that thing was going to show up in your field, right? It was going to show up in your world. Um, if you had really positive feelings, then again, those things, really good things would continue to, to, to appear. And so I really just moved along with that because out of that, then actions happen, right? Is that you, you, um, take inspired action. And, um, and uh, again, that's things start to happen. And, uh, and so what I would find is most people had a hard time kind of keeping that focus. And so that's what I ended up working with them on the most. It morphed into more mindset, because at that point, it was um, law of attraction still at that point. I mean, it was just new, right? Like people didn't know about it. And it was just, it was like, you know, it was just, not well known. So, um, so for me, I really ended up talking more about mindset, much in the same way. So the obvious question that comes here is uh, many like, you know, millions and millions of people consume these teachings, they read these books. But for many of them, it doesn't work. Of course, it Mm -hmm. works for some, it doesn't work for some others. So what is missing in the traditional law of attraction teachings? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so And that was probably my hardest thing is that is, is that I would be able to, you know, I create these amazing things and then all of a sudden, uh, or attract these amazing things and then some things they wouldn't work out. And same thing with my clients, they'd have these great results in some things and then not in others, just like you said. And so, uh, it wasn't until recently I, and I had really gone through a process of, I was continuing to look for what was the answer, right? What was the thing? What was that missing piece? And um, I came across somebody probably about two, just over two and a half years ago now. And 
the concept was about frequency is that uh, is tapping into a frequency that and, and so when you're in a frequency, you know, again, whatever it is that you want, it will show up because if you're aligning with that, if you are in that same frequency, then you align with it. And it was that at that moment, I just really realized it was just like, oh, okay, now I can understand. When I look back on the things that I didn't that didn't show up for me, it was because there was I, I called it the the trinity trinity of trouble, uh, fear, doubt, and worry, and um, and so when you go into fear, doubt, and worry, you are in a different frequency, and and so that was really that. And again, when I with my clients too, is just you, you just we all we're shifting, we're shifting frequencies, we're kind of shifting in and out of what we want. Um, we get distracted by our outer world, and therefore we tend to base our frequency or, or tend to align with what is happening around us as opposed to really what we want in our heart. So, yeah, so that is now, that's how I, I am working, working with people now. And that's how I'm, I'm moving my life along is, is, is really, that was the missing piece. It really was about frequency. It wasn't attraction kind of fits. It fits into frequency, but unless you are in the right frequency and aligning with it, just things don't happen. And I, that I think is the, that's the missing piece. Yeah. And, and we tend to, you know, uh, of course we read the books and just spending 10 time at 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes at night, and then mm -hmm. living unconsciously throughout the day doesn't work. That is yeah. one of the problems that I faced in my life. Of course, mornings, we do affirmations, but then like once we get on with our day, our unconscious tendencies begin to, you know, take charge. And that is the problem. Yeah, exactly. The next thing that I wanted to discuss was uh, the concept of all frequencies exist right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Different teachers talk about this in different ways. Mm -hmm. Neville Goddard, I think he says creation is already complete. So what do you have to say about this? And how can we, if so, if all frequencies exist right now, how can one consciously choose a frequency through which he can create his life the way he wants to? Yeah, it's such an amazing concept. And I think it really goes on the, the multiple worlds theory, right? Is that mm. everything exists now. So when we remember that, and um, mm. when we remember that, the frequency of the thing that we want already exists and we can start kind of living in that way and tapping into that. Or I, I just say receiving, right? We want to, we want to get into that state of receiving that frequency. Uh, I also kind of make the, 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 the distinction between conjuring and, and downloading. So right now we are always trying to figure things out. We're always trying to think our way through, through, through things. And again, with the people that I mostly work with, they've done really, really well by doing that. And so that's the, um, they've been rewarded for thinking, right. And for figuring stuff out, but with frequency, it's not about that. It's really about receiving it. And so um, it's down, it's got really downloading that feeling of uh, or that that frequency and the feeling of it, and uh, when we do that, um, we have access to it, and uh, and when we access that on a, on a consistent basis uh, throughout the day to start, it be, it starts to become who we are, and and like we I think we've all probably most of the people that would be listening to us today have heard, you know, uh, wherever you go, go, there you are, or you only get what you are or, or who you are being. And so, and that's your frequency. And so to align with that really takes, it, it, it takes focus. And, um, and I have some particular steps that I, I walk people through, but really is about being about um, getting into that. I'm going to, you know, uh, Neville Goddard talks about state. And um, I think that's a key thing that for a lot of people and myself included, because I, you know, I, Neville Goddard is one of my, you know, one of all his books are, um, you know, my go to's or used to be mm. my go to's. And um, one of the things that I found with that is that people say it's all about the feeling. So for me, because I'm kind of excitable, and you know, it's just like, well, yeah, so I, I, I would imagine having the thing that I want, I'm just like, yeah, I, I've got it. And it's it's here. And it's so great. But the fact of the matter is, is that 
the once you when you are actually in the state of having what you want it's like i don't get excited about the computer that i have right because i have it right so i appreciate it i'm in gratitude for it i i really like using it but i don't go yay there's my computer i don't come into my office and go yay it's here right so i think that is the distinction also that um and where people kind of um where it's not clear is that it's not about the state of, oh, I just received it. It's no, it's the state of, I already have it. And what is life like then? And so when we do that, uh, when we're in that state or in that frequency, um, it's just, it's just a, it's a knowing and it's a having it's, it's just like, it's just normal. And so, yes, it's the feeling of normal, but, I have misinterpreted, and I think that's a lot of what's happened for a lot of people is that we've misinterpreted that getting into the feeling of it is like, oh, I'm really excited about it. And, um, I, and that's not it. I don't, that's not particularly what. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is very subtle. Like at, on the surface, it seems like the teachings are telling us that, but then, mm-hmm. yeah, like you said, we don't attract what we want. We attract what we are. So the frequency is my frequency is my being right my thoughts feelings my personality all together it is at a frequency right now that is what yeah. you mean yes yeah, yeah. so if you can think about it, every uh, every frequency has is it's like mm. its own little universe right so mm. if you think about um a radio channel or or even like netflix or something right where it's just like okay here's the well, we'll just t- take radio channels to begin with but radio channel you're um, you're switching to a radio channel and in that radio channel, there's different people, there's different songs, there's people, different people talking, there's advertisers. It's a whole little world unto itself. Right. And so, um, so yes, it's not, it, 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 and it's not even just about us. It's just that there's a frequency of the thing that we want and in there exists everything. And so, but yes, it's all those things that you said. And, you know, again, it's, it's that world where that all exists. Let's put it this way. Like I am a frequency right now, Mm -hmm. uh, whatever it is. And let's say my, my desire, what I want is at a different frequency, right? If I don't have it yet, it is at a different frequency. Right. So like, what do I have to do to get there? Right. So there's a great question. So to get to align with that frequency mm. is uh, I I call it to, for me I call it the zap process, which is you go into zero okay. point. You don't always have to do okay. this, but you can just a few moments of just clearing your mind where you're you're neutral, right? Where there you're not um, you're not and I I, I say materializing or, or dematerializing things, right? Or people would say creating or uncreating. And I, I, I'm straying away from the word creating now because um, everything's already created. So we're not really yeah. creating anything. We're accessing it. We're, so to me, it's like I'm materializing and we're materializing into that timeline or into that frequency. Um, and so to access and to align with that frequency, we need to, again, just take that, that moment or, you know, even, you know, you could, do you could meditate or you could go into that state of just nothingness for for a time and then from there you activate a frequency you choose that frequency that you want to to um, uh, move into or to materialize and at that point it's just allowing yourself to receive that frequency and so to me I would say and and what I teach is to ask is have people ask or say to source or God or, or whatever that higher power is and say, okay, I am ready to receive the frequency of, you know, having a new house or, or, you know, having the partner of my dreams or whatever it is, right. Having that great job or having X amount of dollars in the bank account, I'm ready to receive that frequency and then be still. And then just allow that to come in and just to, to, to start to feel that. Um, and what happens is that when you start to allow yourself to feel that in your body first, because that's your closest, when you're feeling that, that's your closest connection to the energy is when you're, when you're feeling, when you're feeling it. And it's not you conjuring that feeling. 
It's not like you going, okay, I think it's going to be like this and it'll feel like this. And it's not that it's actually just allowing that to download. Right. And Mm -hmm. so when that happens and um, from there, it's just expanding that because what will start to happen is, is start to, there will start to be uh, uh, visuals and maybe sounds and smells and all those other sensory, that sensory information. It's like, it's, it's, it's just kind of data, right? It's, we're downloading the data of that frequency. And so when that starts to happen, we can then expand. It's like, okay, I can imagine, um, uh, I can imagine these things happen. It's again, it's not us visualizing it. It's us receiving those, da- those, those visuals. And uh, the reason for that is it's so much more expansive than what we can even think about, right? What what we can even come up with. Uh, And so in that receiving process, um, we just stay with that as much as, as long as we can. And, um, and that will just start to feel, start to feel that in our body. But then our next thing is really to feel it in our hearts. And then the more that, and Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about this, you know, when your heart and your mind come together, that, uh, creates that it starts to create a reality right and so um and to me when we do this we're actually we are materializing we are connecting we are aligning with that frequency and this frequency uh need not be one desire right it, it need not be one thing that we want like it can be a holistic life for us like yeah our relationship yeah. Health, everything together it is yes. in a yeah. particular frequency yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, one of the things that I, I suggest to people to start is actually pick one thing, right? Pick one mm. thing, because then it's kind of easier to, it's easier to That's imagine, cool. right? Mm. But what happens is that when you go into that zap process, and you're activating mm. that, that frequency, mm. it's, it, those things will start to show up, they'll start to, they'll start to, yeah, they'll just start to show up in your mind first. And, um, and uh, when we do that, it's just, it's, it's, it's magical. And what I realized once I learned this is that for those things that happened so quickly in my life, right, there were just these massive mm. leaps, like even just the, the, uh, the podcast, when I, when I put it out, of course, it was, it was good timing and it was good, you know, maybe it was the right, it was the right title at the right time. Right. Um, but, and, and so I couldn't explain that beyond that for that moment, except that as I attracted these people, people were looking for it and that attracted it. But then I could, I, I, you know, in terms of recreating that, I couldn't recreate that Mm. in other things necessarily, but it happened so quickly, I think. And I put my podcast out in the December and by January, I'd had like over 20,000 downloads. And then the next month, Mm. you know, it's it's like these, if you can imagine, Mm. it's like, it was mind blowing Mm. to me because it's like, if you think about stadiums, um, you know, where people are watching sports and such, you know, there are 20,000 people in that. Absolutely. It's like, yeah. oh, oh my goodness, that's, that's yeah. how many people are downloading what I'm, what I've done. And so to me, it was like, I was so much in that frequency of wanting to share the information. And, um, and so there were those, all those people who were tapped into that same frequency. And so, and then found me. So um, it's yeah. easy to say, oh, well, it's a marketing thing, you know, the right time, right place, you know, right yeah. title. But uh, right image, <laughs> but it's so much yeah. more than that. Yeah, and I think it always comes like that. The right, it it comes at the right time. Those yeah. synchronicities, it always happens at the right time. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Well, and ag- again, if you think if you think about frequency again, it's just like well, of course, because it's all there, right? And so mm-hmm. you've it's just I've tapped into that, and the other mm-hmm. things where it was just um, again. Mm-hmm. Just, I just, there was something I tapped into and, and just knowing I have so many stories, my own personal stories, but also my clients' stories where it's just, oh, there was just, you just were able to tap into that and, um, and it happened. And so, yeah. And let's talk about the parallel realities of the self. Let me just explain what I think it is. And like, sure. you can, yeah, yeah. So parallel realities, uh, When I was reading Reality Transurfing, a similar concept, like, you know, there are different infinite parallel realities of an individual in which, you know, each of the parallel reality is different from one another. Mm -hmm. And based on where we show our attention and based on our being, we choose a reality which is most compatible to us. Is this uh, how it works or can you explain the parallel realities of the self? Yeah. 
Um, so yes, and I'll, I'll it's like this book. It's like the Bible. If you look, uh -huh. I, I don't know if you can see that all, all these are oh. all the, and there's uh. and there's like yeah, it's just my that's and that's not where I learned you know about frequency or anything like that. But um, okay. yeah, it's um, the name the, of the, that book is Parallel Realities of the Self. Parallel universes of uh, uh, here. Let's see parallel universes there. of self. Okay. Yeah, Frederick okay. Dodson. Yeah. Frederick Dodson. Yeah. Okay. I think you can choose any reality, quite honestly. But mm. I think in terms of um, you, you mentioned bleed throughs. So everything is happening now. That's the concept of everything is happening now. And of course, mm. we used to think um, that oh, there's something in the future. This thing is in the future. Or this thing is in the past. And um, what I've come to understand is that our desires are actually bleed throughs from that other universe where we are actually already operating there, right? There's a me that's in, a, in an, another universe. I mean, a gazillion other universes, but there's another universe. And so, and in there, I'm doing the exact, you know, I'm having the exact sp experience in my life that I really want to have. There's another one that's having a totally awful experience, right? And, and, uh, and everything in between, right? Every possible mm -hmm. Um, thing in, in, in between, but the ones that make it through the, like the, the ideas that make it through um, that those desires, those are um, to me, those are bleed throughs from those other timelines through, through those, from those um, other universes, very same thing. And um, cause I had that thought, I was like, wow, you're right. Of course that is, that is, that is, that makes sense. Right. I have this, yes. I, I have all these different desires. Where do they come from? Not everybody has those same desires, right? Um, but the mm -hmm. ones that are are closest to us, you know, let's say, are, yeah. are most, you know, just a, kind of the next level for us are the easier ones to attain for sure because it doesn't take much of a shift in frequency for us to to get to that. On the other hand, the um, all those kind of worst case scenarios that where we're, we're that we're entertaining the the worry, doubt, fear. Um, and sometimes, and those things sometimes come to pass, right? It's like, well, I knew that was going to happen. Well, yes, because you accessed that frequency, you you received that frequency, it became part of you. It became, or you became part of it, right? And so, um, or you merged, however you however we want to put okay. that. But um, and so, it's it really is. I I, I say this to my clients all the time. All problems are uh, a result of focus and frequency, right? So if you're not focused on the right frequency, you're not going to get the things that you want, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and so it really is continuously that I'm, here's my focus. I'm tapping into this. I'm, I'm, you know, again, I'm, I'm zapping, right? And uh, so the, the zero point access uh, or uh, activating, um, activating the frequency and play, right? So we, I'm just playing with this frequency what, during my, my regular day, what would it, you know, I'm, if I'm this, what is, what is, what does that feel like? What am I doing? Right. Um, but that's how I, that's how I think about it. It's just that those bleed throughs are really us um, in a different dimension or a different, a different universe that is actually doing those things. And like in your mind, do you think, these realities actually exist in like in actually by actually i mean do they physically exist or they subtly exist yeah yeah I, you know i don't i i don't know right i mm. mean i think um i i think it's kind of beyond our comprehension right is it is it existing yeah. in a different dimension yeah sure i guess anything's possible mm. right we just don't know yeah. We don't know yeah. and you know we don't have that access to the full understanding of how the universe works but um regardless uh, to my because i get asked by uh, asked this by a number of people and, and it's just like mm. I, yes i it could be it could be that there is that me that's doing that or it's me that's ready that are that 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 reality mm. exists but it's not online yet right and it has a past and it has a future but it's not on, you know, let's, you know, using the computer um, kind of analogies, it's not online yet, right? Mm. Regardless, it doesn't kind of, it doesn't really matter. How do we use that for our, for what we want to achieve and what we want to do mm. and what we want to experience right now? So if that concept works, if receiving that works, 
And again, if we look back at how we've created our life in the past or the, you know, the, how those amazing things have happened to us in the, in the past, then we would, you'll see that thread is like, oh yeah, we were in that frequency. And so um, we were very tapped in. Um, so to me, that's just, it's what will you, how can we use this? What would be yeah. the most useful way um, for us to think about mm-hmm. this? And we could spend all day trying to figure it out and still not actually get it right. So and what are the limitations to this, right? Because let's say I'm five six, I can't compete with seven foot basketball players. Right. So e- even though theoretically there is a parallel reality in which I am seven feet tall, but <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> I can't imagine bringing it here, or it it seems impossible. So what right. what do you think are the limitations of this? Yeah. Well, I think that's the limitation right there, right? Mm-hmm. Is that it's it is mm-hmm. that, um, and I think uh, um, if we just if we go into the imagination is reality. So if we can't even imagine it, there's no possible reality. Um, the you know Frederick Dawson talks about in in parallel universes of self that um, you know, that those things the physical changes can be made in an instant, right? And we see that with mm-hmm. multiple personalities where that. You know, yeah. somebody can lose 20 pounds in three days because they've changed their personality, like they, they you know, with, with that multiple personalities, or they will, have, uh, they will present with a, um, a disease and then they're, they've, they take on that other personality and that disease goes like in, 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 in you know, in very short period of time. So could you go to seven feet tall? conceivably, but it's just not even within our concept of how the world works, right? Mm-hmm. So in that, right away there is that limitation is that no it's not it, it would not happen because we can't imagine it it doesn't yeah, maybe, fit with yeah with 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 the i i could to me it's like we're kind of we've come into this reality with a common set of of um, agreements and and rules let's say and so mm-hmm. we have lots of play but there are some things that is just beyond the scope of uh, of that yeah. so yeah. yeah. And also maybe I think it is the limitation of our mind because yes. uh, yeah. like, yeah, our podcast and our YouTube channel is more about Indian scriptures, Vedanta, Dvaita. Uh, I'll talk about this uh, later on. But then uh, there is a book. Uh, it's very popular. Autobiography of uh, Yogi. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Even Steve Jobs used to read it. And there are many books like that where there are extreme examples of yogis in India who used to, you know, walk through walls, who used to float, who used to, uh, one, there is an instance where a person's hand was cut off and because of his abilities, you know, he just, it seems he just, uh, you know, fixed it right back. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe, yeah, it, it seems impossible because maybe it's the limitation of our minds. But then mm-hmm. the universe itself is, uh, you know, there is no limitation to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. And I think, um, yeah, and I, there's con- there, there's so many, um, so many mm. examples of that. It's just like, I don't even, mm. how did that even happen? I mean, if you even think about some, t- some things that we see or we think we see or we, 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 we see some occurrence. Like I just think about traffic, right? And you, if, if you're in a busy, in a busy location and mm. all of a sudden, it looks like this person is just going to have like, it's just, is going to have an accident. Right. It's like, how did that car miss that person or that other car? Yeah. It's almost like they just, they just went through each other or it's just something magical mm-hmm. happened. And it just, I don't even know how that happened. And, and we put it off to, Oh no, it's just my perception. I didn't see it. Right. You know, you kind of do the shake yeah. of your head and just like, okay, I didn't really see that. But in fact, I think those things are always happening and yeah. um yeah i, I totally mm-hmm. agree i think um yeah yeah, yeah. it's it, yeah. In, in our minds we're not at that level and uh, maybe we maybe we'll never never will be but uh you know yeah. most people are not ever going to be at that level where it's like okay mm-hmm. yeah i can chop off my hand and you know mm-hmm. reattach it yeah. right and as yeah. if nothing happened and uh, what is the role of action in law of attraction right what role does action play Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, and so forgive me. I don't, I, cause I don't refer to law of attraction at, at all anymore, just because I, mm. it's, um, 
it is so 3d oriented like in 3d mm. in the three just in the reality world where um where again i want to i tend to again go over to the frequency side and and more from an internal perspective but action again same kind of thing for most people it is it is necessary it's like well i've got to do something in order for something to happen um mm -hmm. and i bet every one of us has had an instance where we there was something we had some desire and it could have been just really small or it could have been bigger and we had dwelled on it for a bit and, but, and it just came to fruition. We really didn't have a whole lot to do with it. Right. Um, mm. So that conceivably is, you know, is possible. But to me, uh, for most people, what makes it easier is that we just take actions um, and it's inspired action. So again, when we're downloading we're in, and, and receiving that frequency of the reality that we want to be in, then then the next thing is, okay, what's, you know, what, what am I compelled to do? What do I feel drawn to do? What's, I, I, what's, it's like following the energy. What really is exciting to me? What is, what is intriguing me? Like, for, for again, going back to the, the podcast so long ago, it's just, I could not not do it. I was so, I was just compelled. It was just like, I've got to do this. And this was way, very early on in podcasting. Um, and I just like, okay, now I've got to learn it. I've got to figure it out. I traveled to a different city to, to, um, to go and learn about it from some of the first people who were, were who were teaching about podcasts. And, um, and so to me, that's how action is. It's really, it's about inspired. It's just like, oh, I, I must do this. I feel like I, this is the next step or this just feels interesting to me. And so that's yeah. how the action comes into play. And what's your uh, advice for people who are stuck in a negative cycle, right? Like we know how this works. People who grow, once they understand this, people who are positive in nature, they keep on growing. But at the same time, this, this law that there is, it also takes someone in a downward spiral who don't understand this. So for someone who is stuck there in mm -hmm. a lot of negativity, what would you advise them to do? I think the first thing is to remember that in every moment, every moment, all you can just shift. Um, I uh, teach a process. It's, it's so simple. It's just stop, pivot, focus, feel, right? So mm. it's just, a, I, okay, realizing I'm, I'm, I'm feeling negative. I just need to stop, mm. pivot, so it's just like, okay, I'm, I'm focused on this really negative thing. And that, or, I'm sorry, I'm, now I'm looking, look like looking, I'm, mm. <laughs> it looks like I'm looking at you in the, in the video here, but it's like, okay, I'm, I'm focused <laughs> on this really negative thing. And so um, now I want to stop realizing this and then I want to pivot and focus on the really positive things or the thing that I want, right. Or just even something that's more neutral. And so, and then you focus on that. And then you feel so, and you feel it's like, okay, yeah, that would be really good. Or it just, I've just shifted. I've just, I'm shifted mm -hmm. into a, just a neutrality. It, even if you just do that, it's so much better. But, um, but if we can just, um, so if we just know that in any moment we can change the course of our actions, every choice is like a, another uh, movement towards it, the, the, um, uh, timeline that, that we're wanting to move towards or the reality that we're wanting to move towards. Um, I have a process also, people are really negative and there's just like this, there, there can have been um, an energy of our beliefs or stories that we've been telling ourselves for a very long time that gets stuck in our field. And so that's kind of one of my, um, oh, it's one of my superpowers is really just being <laughs> able to, um, go in and 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 shift and change that that energy and release yeah. it so i could it's, it, it, it's a frequency release and activation um okay. so i release that frequency of that that energy that's in their field and then um mm -hmm. activate the one that they actually truly want to have instead uh mm -hmm. but really the the for people who are just feeling negative and um and feel like oh i'm just going i'm spiraling down just remember in any moment you can stop and just, you know, listen to something that inspires you with, or, you know, do something that just you really like to do, or, um, yeah, I mean, you know, or just, um, play some music or, you know, hang out with friends, 
being gratitude. I mean, as soon as you can get into that state of just of, of gratitude, the frequency mm-hmm. of gratitude and, and, and just being thankful for the things that you do have that are really, that are good. And sometimes it's a stretch, right? For some people that's yeah. just like, oh, I like my life <laughs> is such crap. I, there's nothing I, yeah. you know, I don't, I can't be grateful for anything. Right. That's mm-hmm. not true. Um, and so it's, there's something, right. You have some mm-hmm. things, there are some people mm-hmm. around you that, um, that care about you. Um, mm-hmm. and regardless, the sun is going to come up today. So that's, that's really, you know, be grateful for mm-hmm. that. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the biggest challenge, right. For most people and even what I faced was not understanding this like of course when we read it we understand this but to maintain a frequency which is different than our default frequency whether it is for a person who is stuck in a negative cycle of course at momentarily they can pivot but then maintaining that positivity or maintaining that frequency throughout the day how can one do it recently i i think uh uh, there's a there's a process uh, it's a centering um, uh, exercise that I um, think is really really powerful where you just you become aware of um, you just come into the present moment and really yeah. the moment that you can do that the more you can center yourself and then connect to me I, I, I add that in it's a uh, it's a self inquiry process too mm. and um, I kind of I put those two together on, on an ongoing basis where it's just I center is like, okay, I'm, I'm being aware of my thoughts. I am um, being aware of my, you know, what's going on around me. I'm feeling of how I'm feeling in my body. And just again, very, very much getting into the, into the, uh, the present moment. And then there's the thoughts or the thinker of the thoughts and then the observer. And so um, and witness. I, I, yeah. what's that? Uh, we call it in Vedanta, we call it witness who is oh, witnessing okay. everything. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. Witnessing. Yes. Um, yeah. So when you're witnessing and, and then just stopping and say, okay, so what's the next thought? And this is the thing that I think is so very cool. Cause when you say, you know, what's the next mm-hmm. thought, it's just like, everything kind of goes blank, which makes yeah. me really think maybe we are AI. <laughs> Cause <laughs> it's, I think we're, I think we're constantly being prompted by our, our outer world. And so, yeah. um, and then we're, you know, that creates all these thoughts. But if, if we stop, it's like, okay, what's the no- next thought? There's your moment, you know, mm-hmm. for a moment, or maybe a few moments. And, and if you can practice it for longer, that's kind of almost where you can get to that, start yeah. to access that zero point or at least neutrality. And then from there, the next step is who are you? Who am, who am I? And to me, it's like, I am, right? So yeah. when you get to that state, it's just like, oh, I am. And and you're accessing your power, you're accessing source, you're connecting to source. From there, it's it's um, very powerful. But if you just do the centering where you're just getting present, and you can do that once an hour for you know during yeah. the waking hours, changes everything. Yeah, I I found this in uh, before this. I found this in reality transurfing the mm-hmm. centering method. Yeah, yeah. He talks about watching your inner screen and the outer screen. So okay. what what is happening inside and what is happening outside? And then yeah. you'll come to the stillness. Now, I wanted to ask about how can one navigate between being and doing, right? Like, of course, we need to be grateful for what we have. And we need to be still, we need to be content with whatever we have. At the same time, we crave change, we desire different things. So there is, they, they seem like they both are opposites of each other the gratitude and craving and desiring something else. So how can one balance it and how can one navigate that? That's a great question. Um, Obviously I think they go in, I think they go hand in hand, right? So again, there's the, the, the things that we already have and the things that we want to have kind of opposite side or two sides of the same Mm -hmm. coin. Right. I think it's just being, I think it's just being grateful. Um, And I think that when we come to the understanding that, again, there's a frequency for everything that is that we desire, that we know that Mm. it, to Mm. me, it's just like a game then, right? It's just like this Mm. intrigue of, oh no, there's, 
the desire that it's showing me that it's already there. The thing that I want is already, it already exists. I just need to align with this. Right. And then from there, life just becomes quite, you know, an amazing thing because, Oh, that's the next thing. And it's like, you get to appreciate that and, and hang out in it for a while. And now it's just like, we're, it's natural for us um, to, then desire the next thing, right? Um, unfortunately, in in our you know the world that we live in now, it, that's kind of um, we don't necessarily. A lot of people don't go for kind of like the bigger things, the bigger experiences that they can have in their life. It's more about the consumerism. Oh, it's like I want to buy that TV or I want to get mm-hmm. that car or and that's all okay too, right? It's again mm-hmm. to me, it's all about the experiences that we can have. But I think once we understand that, no. It, it is it, it is accessible to us at that desire it's already showing it's bleeding through from that timeline it's just showing that oh yeah i exist that exists i exist there and so can i so what's my next step to align with it and yeah. and, and but which allows you also to still be grateful for where you are it's just now i'm just gonna i'm just gonna move over here right yeah and here i'll take uh, two minutes to explain to you the teachings of uh, vedanta which Mm -hmm. uh, like yeah me personally i've from the last decade i started with you know uh, tony robbins and then uh, the secret then neville goddard abraham hicks reality transurfing so i've gone through so many teachers and teachings and eventually i found uh, the teachings of uh, the ancient upanishads if you've heard of them mm-hmm. they are more than 10000 years old they 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 don't have anything to do with law this manifestation per se but they mm-hmm. explain to us the nature of reality you are talking about the i am right the witness mm-hmm. of uh, everything so mm-hmm. the basic the basic premise of vedanta is that there is absolute non dualism so the duality that we see Mm-hmm. only appe- appears to exist but mm-hmm. in reality there is mm-hmm. pure consciousness alone which has manifested itself in in finite number of ways mm-hmm. and each of us are different masks that that god or that infinite consciousness is wearing mm-hmm. and it is experiencing itself in a mm-hmm. universe that it has created for itself mm-hmm. through through various uh, people, animals, birds, so everything is source itself. Right. Now, huh, now the moment we identify ourselves with this body and mind, mm-hmm. we are stuck, we are limited mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. Uh, we think we are this flesh, blood and bones. Right. So that is when it is difficult to manifest, it is difficult to create something or do whatever it is because we are using the limited apparatus of the body and mind. Instead of this, if we identify ourselves as the infinite consciousness, like you said earlier, so that is when all of this becomes easy. It becomes like a game that, mm-hmm. and and also we holistically see what is good for society as a whole. So mm-hmm. yeah, that is the basic premise of Vedanta, the mm-hmm. teachings of from ancient India. So mm-hmm. once I found this teaching, right, and once I understood this. First of mm-hmm. all, my life uh, changed a lot. And then after understanding this, everything else started making sense because the teachings of secret by themselves, uh, mm-hmm. the secret and the typical law of attraction teachings, mm-hmm. they don't talk about this, right? They don't talk mm-hmm. about universal consciousness, no. oneness. So it is almost, it is empowering the ego. So mm-hmm. yeah, this is what I wanted to ask because for a typical person who don't un- who doesn't understand this universal oneness and consciousness for them getting the teachings on manifestation or the secret is like empowering their ego the desires that they have is may not be truly theirs right mm-hmm. uh, many desires mm-hmm. that i had in the past i don't want it now so maybe at that time because of my ego i wanted something Mm-hmm. So h- how would one differentiate a desire that is coming from the place of ego or from the place of uh, a deep purpose and from the place of pure consciousness? Um, that's a great question. So um, I think um, it's those things that we just feel, um, and, and everything you've just said is really very, that's exactly, 
uh, it's exactly how the premise of that I, I I work with. It's just the words are different, you know, or the concepts yeah, are just absolutely. how how we Got do it. it is just a little bit different. So, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think that. Um, Look, I think we're giving gifts, right? We all have yeah. our gifts and um, and I, uh, so many of us deny them, right? We just think, well, no, mm -hmm. who am I to do this? You know, I have this this thing that's wanting to come through and it doesn't it doesn't feel it doesn't feel right, right? It doesn't feel like I, that's not who I am, right? And I think and but it's still present. And to me, if it's one of those things that continues to be there despite you, or just say, you know, that, that it, I don't even know why that's coming up for me or that's not, you know, I just, that's beyond anything. To me, that is that, that pure source coming through that is, that is source wanting to, to know itself. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, but in terms of kind of like the earthly everyday desires, um, it, uh, most of those are, are connected to ego, but on the, on the flip side of that, there are just things that, I believe we're here to experience, right? And so mm -hmm. getting a new, another, you know, six, getting a 75 inch TV, cause I only have a 55 inch TV, you know, that's probably very much ego, right? So, <laughs> but yeah. um, if it is, um, but even that, but, even there's nothing wrong in that, right? Like, no, 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 no. It's, it's, yeah. it's like, Hey, just have fun. That's what, you know, that's yeah. part of this whole experience. Um, mm. I think that it's it's questioning, it's continuing to question, why do I want that? Do really, is that what I want or is that what I think I should want? Is that what society is, you know, keeps putting up in my face that's something that I want? I'll give an, ex I'll give an example. Um, a long, quite a long time ago, we lived in a place, um, Victoria, BC, and um, there was, in the Inner Harbor, there would be these big yachts that would come in and they would park themselves there. And, uh, and so my husband and I would go down and we just, we'd go for a Sunday walk and then we'd just go and hang out and or sit down and, mm -hmm. and uh, you just see all these kind of cool things. And so I just say, I just said to Jeff, so I want a yacht, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, yeah, I want a yacht. And so I, I started thinking, okay, that would be a cool thing. And then, you know, just mm -hmm. trying to, to go through into the law of attraction because that's where I was at, at that point. And then there was a day I kind of thought, wait a minute, I don't really like, why would I, I don't want to be out, you know, on the water, like in the ocean, like that's the last thing I want to do, right? I'm not, I'm not a water person. I like to be by the water, not necessarily on it or in it, <laughs> So, um, but I like to be by it. But, um, and, it's, and I was, with, was thinking, it was like, well, there's, there's all these people that like you could see all these people that were working there. It's like, okay, this there's, it's, it's just, there's a lot of people there. So even if I'm on my yacht with my husband and we're friends, there's going to be lots of other people, which I don't really want either. Right. And so mm -hmm. there was just this moment was like, Oh, I thought I wanted that, but I really mm -hmm. didn't. It was just something that, okay, if, if that would just show that I'm rich and powerful and whatever. But uh, I think when you start to really spend some moments to look at, uh, um, really delve in why is it that i want this is this something that i really do want or is this something mm. that i think um you know is going to give me you know status or yeah. people are going to look at me differently you know it's it's i'm doing that because i think i'm going to get something as opposed to just enjoying the experience so yeah. i don't know if that answers yeah. the question but it's yeah, yeah. um yeah and yeah like you said there's nothing wrong in that but staying no. at that place throughout your life be, not evolving beyond that is a loss that's all yeah 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 mm. but then you get to come back <laughs> yeah <laughs> correct yeah. yeah and uh what do you have to say about the nature of mind in all this the this conscious mind subconscious mind so a lot of stuff is happening at the subconscious level right i think mm -hmm. uh, a lot lot of stuff is there so mm -hmm. that that is where we have to go to take account of our frequency yeah, I mean, so the subconscious mind is, uh, I mean, we have like, it's estimated 60,000 thoughts a day. And, and, um, mm. and our subconscious mind processes about, I think it's like 400 billion bits of information per second. Um, our, mm. our, our conscious mind is like 2000 bits, you know, of, of information per second. So our subconscious mind is constantly processing all kinds of stuff. Mm. And, um, and only what makes it up to our conscious mind is what we focus on. 
So um, how we use this, yeah, to me, it's like, okay, what is it that's going to help me in my life, in my daily life, Mm. right? So Mm. it really always comes down to focus, but Mm. how we connect in with the I am or source is through our subconscious mind. So so meditating takes some time to be quiet, to to connect in with zero point. That is that that most I think those things are very useful because that grounds you, or mm. again allows you to be able to listen or to witness or to to get those messages um, from mm. source that will take you where you want to go. Yeah. Is that was was that actually what you asked? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wanted to ask uh, the importance of uh, subconscious mind and how can this teaching that you are mm-hmm. telling us, how can we take this to the subconscious mind, right? Like right now we are listening and our conscious mind is listening. Do you suggest any practices through which one can uh, make this a habit? Um, again, um, that I do with my clients is, is, is really every morning is... Um, if you can get up and, uh, and frack yourself, <laughs> which is, <laughs> which is when you freak, when you do a frequency release. So you okay. just pay attention to what is the things, what are kind of the negative things that are coming up for mm-hmm. me um, mm-hmm. and release those right for, and, and so mm-hmm. there's all kinds of clearing processes out there. Mine is, you know, I got mm-hmm. my own. And so, um, so yeah. the more that you can release that, if, you know, at night before you go to bed and first thing in the morning, if anything comes up, because sometimes we have bad dreams and, you know, there's just, so we yeah. release that and then we activate the, the frequency that we want. So it's, it's, it's choosing what is it that we're going to focus on today um, mm. and then connecting in with that frequency. So um, zero point, so zap, so zero point, activate mm. the frequency and just play with that during the day. To me, then it's connecting in through that day through centering and um Hmm. and those things those things are kind of like the techniques Hmm. but other than that it's just gratitude it's really just being in gratitude and going through your day though that that gratitude alone um will reprogram your subconscious into um, yeah. uh, into a, a very different state than we generally are, right? Because again, we're so focused on the outer world, uh, mm. what's going on, what is my next step, who's gonna, who's thinking this, who's doing what, and it's not necessarily getting us where we want to be. And what do you think is the importance of meditation and all this? Do you do meditation every day? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm. not as regularly as I need, I would like to, but yes, taking those mm. moments for silence and, and, and moving into silence, I think is absolutely critical, um, mm. to, to again, being able to access, uh, our connection to source. Mm. Right. And so, <laughs> yeah. um, and, and actually I say hear it because that's really how it comes in for me. Right. It's like, you know, I hear those or, or uh, the, those answers or those, those messages that come through is like, okay, go this way, do this, you know? Um, uh, but it, th- to me, that just allows you to be more uh, present and yeah, witness what is, yeah. what witness what is around you that will, um, that will help you to, to lead a, a much happier inflow life. Yeah. And especially for a person like me, like uh, I do meditations every day Mm -hmm. and uh, those moments are really, um, really important for me because Mm -hmm. my mind is very active. Like Mm -hmm. I keep thinking, I keep thinking, thinking, you know, that. Mm -hmm. uh, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So that moments, at least one half an hour to 45 minutes when I sit by myself, at least at that moment, the mind Mm -hmm. is still so it, it gets some rest. Yeah, yeah, so those moments are important yeah. for me. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and, and that's a great thing because to, to bring up because I think we are so, we're trying to, again, we're trying to conjure things. We're trying to figure things out on an ongoing basis. And so, um, mm. which means we're trying to control things constantly. Mm. And again, that gets us so far. But then um, the more mm. that we can actually, again, listen, which meditation allows you to actually be more present and, and witness mm. and listen that um you you stopped controlling you stop trying to control and figure everything out because yeah. that just makes things it take longer to achieve and uh, which is your favorite book and who is your favorite teacher in all this at this moment it's the parallel universes of self um from okay. uh frederick dodson that is uh, okay. that that is my that is my absolute favorite, favorite book 
at this oh, moment. Okay. Yeah. But it, okay. but, and, and it's been for a while, but yeah. other than that, um, there's mm. a Neville Goddard book. I'm just looking at it over here. It's your mm. inner conversations are creating your world. And, mm. um, those are, those are my go-tos on a consistent basis and they lift me up. And even yeah. though I could almost probably recite them, you know, by, by, you know, just by my, my mind these days. Mm. Um, it's just those moments where, you know, I'll, I'll, before I go to sleep, I'll just, I'll open a book and I'll just, you know, and cause I've got a gazillion underlines on, on each of the pages right. too. Um, and I'll just look and it's like, Oh yeah, right. That's just, it's just mm. a reminder. And again, I teach this stuff every day. I, mm. you know, I'm constantly answering questions and um, I, I still need that, that input for myself. So it's a great, input for me for me uh you know when it comes to especially money right there are a lot of blocks and there are a lot of beliefs that one has yeah uh, and this is an issue that is uh, relevant for a lot of people yeah. so how how do you address this when it comes to money blocks mm -hmm. typically what i do is i actually clear people i'll, I'll do the, the mm -hmm. a, a frack session with them uh, or in many flat okay. frack sessions with them uh, uh, how long will, will it take typically um an actual frack can take like 15 20 minutes um some you know uh mm -hmm. and they can be so powerful they can release um in fact sometimes mm -hmm. generations of of oh. energy of um, of mm -hmm. those beliefs um mm -hmm. and um you know certainly decades that people have been you know um ruminating mm -hmm. about about whatever their issues are but um mm -hmm. yeah there's all kinds of uh of of stuff but yeah so i, I i'll clear on that that's where i go first okay. and okay. Um, and i think also just uh, teaching the concept that money is just energy and it is going mm -hmm. to go it's going to just make you more of whoever you are. It's just going to mm. follow the frequency of wherever, wherever mm. you are at. So if you're a great person and mm. uh, you have good intentions, because I think that's a lot of, that's a worry for people. It's like, well, if I have all this money, then I'm going to be a bad person or, you know, there's, mm. there's bad things are going to happen and, and, mm. you know, whatever it is. And, um, cause they associate money with bad things. And so it's like, no, no, it's, it's really, it's, it's just an energy and it's, you're, it's just going to make you more of who you already are. And if you allow you to do great things, if you're a good person, if you're a bad person, yeah, it's probably, you're going to do bad things with it. So, um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, typically with your client, right, let's say, imagine a 35 to 40 year old individual who is a professional or an entrepreneur who is, you know, struggling with, money with his business so what would be the typical journey that you would take that person sure um so probably again one of the first things i do with people is i just and it's not like i'm looking for problems it's just like there's an energy there's something that most people when mm -hmm. they come they say like there's something that's holding me back I know mm. I've done all this stuff, you know, I, I, I'm really good at what I do, but, and I've reached mm. a certain level, but I can't go further. Right. I can't, it's like, mm. you know, new level, new devil. Right. Mm. And I can't get past mm. that. So mm. I'll just, um, I'll just start clearing them on that, on that particular, mm. uh, you know, whatever that is, whatever that energy is, whatever that belief or story mm. is. Um, mm. And then I, now what I also do is I'm teaching them about frequency and about accessing that frequency and what to do, you know, and that process mm. of, allowing mm. that frequency, receiving that frequency rather than trying to, you know, um, doing visualization um, and, and um, affirmations and those kinds of things, which for a lot of people just, you know, it, it mm. do they work? Yes. Mm. It just takes a long time. Um, yeah. And to me, uh, I'd like things to go really quickly. Right. So, and, and uh, you know, I work with people who just like, okay, I don't, I don't have a lot of time. I'm busy. I want to, you know, I want to achieve this thing or I want to, I want to get through this quickly. So um, most people have a misconception about time. And so they say, it's going to take a long time. I've had this thing for such a long time. I've had this issue for such a long time. Mm -hmm. It's going to take just as long to, or longer to, to get rid of it. It's like, no, that's not true at all. So, um, but again, it's really about um, connecting them in with that frequency and, and teaching them how to, to access that. Okay. And um, for those who are listening, what would, what can they do, right? Like uh, any 
process, any methods that you can teach them so that they can start living this knowledge and start transforming their lives. Yeah. Right. Um, I think at a very, very basic level, uh, and I think I've mentioned this already, is just being gratitude. Mm -hmm. And for the thing that it is that you want, that your desire is really understand that it is, it already exists. You already exist with it. And so fall in love with that idea, fall in love with it, just fall in love with it. Like how mm -hmm. amazing it is to be in that space. Right. Um, uh, but, you know, again, meditating, um, you know, just taking that time in the morning, just going in into a neutral zone, centering uh, on, on a, on a, as often as you can during the day, those things will will start to shift you. They'll just allow the frequency will 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 start to come in, right? It'll start to it'll start to show up, right? So it's just um, what I find again is that when we when we get rid of just the, the the kind of like the junk, the just like the the energy, those those lower level energies and frequencies of our beliefs and stories when we get rid of those and like Abraham Hicks, it's just like, it's like, you know, the cork rises to the top and that's really what happens. Yeah. Right. Um, mm. And that's why my clients just really do get such quick, you know, quick results often is that they just, when we get rid of that, that negative stuff yeah. that's been holding them back, those stories and those beliefs. And again, just the energy, mm. I just believe that the energy gets stuck in our field. And sometimes again, it's, it's ours or it can be generational. Right. And so, yeah. um, yeah. or even, you know, past lives. Right. And which yeah. are just in Hinduism. Different. Yeah. They call it karma, the, from thousands of years of evolution. Right. Yeah. That, yeah. 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 And so and, when we, when we yeah. eliminate that, then yeah. it's mind boggling. Coming to the, Last question for today. If you had to explain whatever you have learned throughout your life, through all the books, all the teachers, in a few sentences, what would you say about the nature of reality? Right. Hmm. <laughs> That's just a little question. <laughs> um, uh, um, really, that is magical. The nature of reality is really magical. But I think it's also very... Um, very organized to me it's this it's i mean i i, I have a scientific mind you know where it's just I, it's mm. like okay that there's it's orderly right it's, so to me it's very mm. orderly um and um it's orderly and magical so it's really just tapping into that and yeah. the more that we can be in that state of um i can just to say as, as happy a state as possible right or as positive or as a higher level you know um um state as possible those things, um, if you just kind of believe in those miracles happening, that they there there are everyday miracles. So, um, and just to have fun with that, right? That's yeah. yeah that to me, yeah. that's the the nature of reality is just a is fun, magical. <laughs> yeah, magical. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And where can one find you, Karen? Like, uh, which is which would be the best place for someone to? consult you or contact you sure um so um my website is called live a no limits life.com but i would actually also i, I would also go to um live a no limits life.com forward slash links because then that gives you mm -hmm. links really easily to everything that i have uh, available i've got a i've got an app um also okay. called the no limits life and um it's okay. free and it's you know okay. you can get it on any of any device and uh and mm -hmm. I, I interview my mentor about frequency. And so it's, it's pretty cool. But uh, on okay. there, again, there's my YouTube, there's Instagram, and uh, my website and my course, my, my new course called activating you dot three or 3.0. So, um, okay. and there's a new one coming out in the new year uh, for business, for right? specifically okay. for business people. So yeah. Okay. Thank you for coming to this podcast. It was wonderful. Thank you. And maybe we'll do this again sometime. We'll go into greater depth. That would be great. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hello there. If you wish to understand the true nature of reality and learn about consciousness, conscious creation, and the teachings of the ancient Vedanta in order to live your life with purpose, achieve fulfillment, and consciously create a life that you truly want to live, then you can join our community come learning platform, the Advaitha Conscious Society. For more information, visit advaitha.com. Thank you.